Well, hello, Internet. My name is Travis Nielsen, and this is Dev Tips for Designers. This is the first video of the channel, so I thought I'd start it off with a bit of a series I call HTML5 Basics. Before funny cat pics and angry YouTube comments, before even the World Wide Web, there was the Internet. But what was that like? Well, I looked it up. Let me tell you, it's quite interesting. The internet was birthed during the Cold War. It was a way to send intelligence from one nuclear bunker to another. But in 1969, that network was opened and computer nerds everywhere celebrated as they were able to find a way to tie all their nifty little toys together. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, beep. I want to take you to a magical faraway place. Switzerland! In 1999, a British inventor and computer scientist named Tim Berners-Lee proposed a document which outlined something he called the World Wide Web, along with this idea for a worldwide network of connected computers. Tim Berners-Lee also created a language in which documents for this network would be created and managed by people just like you and me. The language that these documents were written in was called Hypertext Markup Language, HTML. HTML was kind of novel to the internet in those days as it was a human readable language. Not a program language for supercomputers, but a language that was human readable that we mere mortals could read and understand. To be fair though, web pages were something very similar to how we think of Word documents. Something to be shared and edited and collaborated on and more of a conveyance of information than a stylized web experience that we have today. In fact, the first World Wide Web browser shipped with a code editor built inside. The intention was that all of the documents across the World Wide Web would be editable by pretty much anybody. At least that's what I understand it to be. There was an underlying philosophy in the beginning about standing on the shoulders of what had come before. HTML1, or the first version of HTML, was very loose and free-flowing. There wasn't a lot of rules, there wasn't a lot of meat to it. For example, the language HTML itself wasn't even very novel. Those kinds of tags already existed in something called SGML, which is another acronym, which stands for Standard Generalized Markup Language. The truth is, there never was an HTML1. The first official spec was HTML 2.0, which was written by the IETF, which means the Internet Engineering Task Force. I love these acronyms, they never stop. Now you can see this happening again as a theme. In a lot of ways, the IETF was just standardizing things that had already been done. For example, the market-leading browser of the time was called Mosaic and included the ability for authors to embed images with an IMG tag. HTML2 didn't invent the IMG tag, it just made it standard. This ragtag band of hooligans, this task force, was eventually superseded by, you guessed it, another acronym, W3C, which stands for the World Wide Web Consortium. There was a flurry of updates until HTML 4.0. After that, the W3C focused on something called XHTML 1.0. XHTML 1.0 didn't add anything new to the language, but again, it standardized and formalized a lot of the things that were just happening in the wild. It led the way for a much more strict syntax. Personally, I really liked XHTML. It's the first time that anybody told us what to do in a very clear way. Before that, we would just look at view source of everybody's websites and see a hundred different ways to do the same thing. It's very confusing. You actually had to declare if you were going to make a strict document or a transitional document, which was kind of like the bridge between HTML5 and XHTML. XHTML wasn't a large departure from HTML, but it was the first step with version 1.1 of XHTML started taking very purposeful steps towards converting HTML into actual XML which is an entirely different language. It was around this time that Internet Explorer, which was the dominant browser of the time. You guys remember Internet Explorer? I remember me and my little brother sneaking in, out and staying up way past our bedtime just to download Internet Explorer 5. <laughs> it took like all night. Internet Explorer, which was the dominant browser at the time, was just like, nope, I'm not gonna do that. So if you decided to write your code in XML, it was like 80% of the entire web couldn't even see your document. 
so it didn't fly. It didn't last very long. So while the W3C continued on the path to XHTML enlightenment, a number of representatives from various different browsers started getting together and discussing things. They formed a group called the Web Hypertext Application Technologies Working Group. And as you may have guessed, they use an acronym for that, the WETWOOG. While it may seem that there's a lot of fingers at the pot at this point, this group is instrumental in bringing about a lot of important change. They approached it totally different. The first group that we talked about, the W3C, the way they operate is they have a committees about things, they ratify by consensus their final documents. If there's any disagreement about it, they discuss it at length and kind of argue about it forever. The WUTWUG does it a little differently. All of the decisions end with the voice of the editor who is the leader of the group. So what happened, the W3C was kind of floating around trying to get those things done and make everybody happy. But the WUTWU was able to move very fast and get a lot of things done in a short amount of time. It may sound like a democratic versus a dictatorial situation. In a lot of ways it was, but the W3C was getting mired with this XHTML idea and it seemed as if they were losing touch. So the WUTWU took two very familiar directions. They focused on web forms, and web apps. And you'll notice that these are two things that are very important in our web experience today. Web forms are the only way that you can buy anything and web apps are the only way that people can provide a service to you via the internet. So in 2006, Tim Berners-Lee, remember he invented the World Wide Web, he admitted in a blog post that the attempt to move from HTML to XML just wasn't working. That night you could hear the sound of a it took a while, but in 2009, the W3C officially dropped XML as the new format. And in what looks like a shake hands and play nice move, the W3C and the WUTWUG joined forces and started working together on something very new and very exciting called HTML5. Now this brings us up to date and to the end of this first video. Next week we're going to talk about what HTML5 is, what it's not, and how you can use it today. I'll give you a hint, you probably already are. Subscribe, subscribe to the channel, subscribe, and you'll get dev tips. Let's go subscribe to dev tips for designers.